Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're diving back into our series dedicated to Hawaiian comfort food classics with a shot at yet another addition to our ever growing collection of fried chicken recipes, which is a popcorn chicken dish known as Mochiko Fried Chicken. For those unfamiliar, mochiko is a type of sweet glutinous rice flour that most iconically is used to make the chewy, sticky, sweet Japanese rice cake dessert known as mochi, wherein the cake's iconic chewy texture of course comes from the use of mochiko glutinous rice flour. Today, however, we're going to be using this rice flour paired with some potato starch to create what I genuinely can say is one of the most unique pieces of fried chicken that I have ever come across due to its slightly sweet and chewy texture, which somehow is both chewy and also still crisp and crunchy too. Then to round this out, we'll also be making use of a bit of dashi powder to dry season our mochiko chicken, which come to think of it, I don't think I have ever actually used to make dashi stock. And finally, a sweet and savory honey sriracha aioli to top everything off, borrowed from our chicken karage recipe from a few weeks back. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so diving right in, our dish should be relatively straightforward today because aside from the quick aioli that we're going to make, this entire dish essentially comes together in one bowl, which I love. So up here first, we're starting off with some core aromatics to go along with our batter, which today will be four cloves of crushed and minced garlic to start, followed by one inch or about one tablespoon of fine minced ginger and the whites of three green onions sliced thinly. We're tossing all of this into our largest mixing bowl here, then taking these reserved leafy greens of our green onions, slicing them thinly on a bias, and setting them aside for our final finishing garnish. Next up is two eggs that I'm whisking up in a separate bowl. I know, I know, that's two bowls, Wesley, sorry. I do think that it is going to be wise to whisk these up in a separate bowl before combining though, because that mochiko flour is going to be quite sticky and pretty tricky to work with once it's in the bowl. Moving on as promised, next up is a half cup each of mochiko flour and potato starch. Now, if you don't have potato starch, you can also just go with corn starch or failing that, plain old AP flour works too. I'm going with potato starch here though because the sticky and chewy texture of that mochiko flour is going to be quite a challenge to get crisped in the fry. So our potato starch is gonna help us keep our chicken light and crispy, not unlike a chicken karage. Rounding out our batter is going to be a quick marinade to our chicken, mainly focusing on the acids since this is the only real opportunity to add any brightness today. This is 4 tablespoons of soy sauce to start, followed next by a single tablespoon each of mirin, rice vinegar, and sesame oil. Then rounding everything out, this is a half tablespoon of dashi powder, or in other words, the powdered form of dashi soup stock. Then I'm setting this all aside for a moment while we get to work on our chicken thigh next. All right, so diving into our chicken thigh here, I'm using about three or four chicken thighs today. We're giving these a quick large dice, then tossing into our mixing bowl and using some camera magic to nope right out of cleaning the cutting board. You'll notice that I did start out with a fork to mix this batter before realizing that our batter is far too thick to whisk with a fork and that this is definitely a job where we're just gonna have to dive in with our hands. Our mochiko batter is quite thick and tacky with not very much moisture going on at all. Ultimately, I think that this is going to play to our advantage in the fry because it's going to help us get a crispier piece of fried chicken. But while we're mixing this to combine here though, you'll notice that a lot of the batter is sticking to my hand, which is a little bit annoying. Next up in a separate bowl, I'm assembling my honey sriracha aioli here. Those following along may recognize this as essentially the same aioli that we used in a few recipes now, I think most recently in the orange chicken karage that we did a few weeks back. This is a half cup of mayo going into my mixing bowl here first, followed by a single tablespoon each of honey and garlic powder, rounded out by two tablespoons of sriracha. Then last up, this is a half teaspoon of dried thyme going in, and we're mixing this all to combine. I'm adding this to a squeeze bottle today so that we can do one of those chefy zigzag patterns with our aioli, but I mean, a spoon will also work just fine too. 
Over on the stove, I have my fryer heating up at a slightly lower 325 degree F temperature today before I add in my chicken for about two to four minutes until golden brown. The lower temperature here is going to help us accommodate for the mochiko flour, which I think crisps up a little bit faster than most batters do. I'm frying in batches here about 20 to 25 pieces at a time, making sure that my fryer doesn't drop below 310 degrees F or so, then removing to my largest mixing bowl and immediately seasoning with a healthy pinch of dashi powder. This is going to give us a nice bump of umami, which I love since there's no glaze or sauce to our chicken today. I'm finishing this all off with a shake of furikake, followed by my sriracha aioli and finally my greens of my green onions to finish, and we're ready to eat. Okay, so to be absolutely honest, it has never even occurred to me to try and use glutinous rice flour in a fried chicken batter for obvious reasons. Why would you want your fried chicken to be chewy? But hear me out, I said it before and I'll say it again, this is truly one of the most unique pieces of fried chicken that I think I have ever managed to create and is absolutely one of my favorites. Obviously the star of the show is the mochiko batter which fries up into a slightly chewy and dense texture on the initial bite. At the same time though, the pairing with our potato starch also helps the chicken stay light and crispy on its exterior, creating a nice crunchy bite with a chewy center that is absolutely unlike any piece of fried chicken that I've ever had. Then to round this out, I think the dry seasoning with our dashi powder adds a nice bit of umami to pair with our honey sriracha aioli, as well as the slightly sweet quality from our mochiko flour. Lastly, there's just something about furikake on fried chicken that feels very nostalgic to me, which I also love. Probably because I've been putting this stuff on literally anything that I can think of for most of my childhood. I don't know. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. For those who are new to the channel, this one is part of a larger series dedicated to Hawaiian comfort food classics. So definitely check out that series next if you haven't yet because there's a lot of these. For the Bay Area locals, the Wu Can Cook fried rice pop-up is now at Wondrous Brewing in Emeryville every Thursday through Sunday. So come by and say hi then if you can. More about that at wucancook.com slash eats. Also, in case you missed it, we've got t-shirts. I'm super excited to be partnering with my good friends at Polywog Prints to make these sweet Wu Can Cook shirts. They're super soft and comfortable, and also there's a picture of me on the back, which is crazy. We're selling these at the Wu Can Cook pop-up, or you can head over to wukancook.com shop to grab one of these from the online store, too. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, be nice, internetters, and I'll see you soon. Bye.